Hey, friends! It's my birthday, and I've got a couple of exciting announcements. For starters, new background. And a guest star. But also, I'm going to be doing a second round of TikTok videos to thank you folks for all of your support today. And I'm going to answer as many questions as I can. Specifically about myself, because I am terrible at talking about myself. So what do you want to know? Ask me anything, within reason. Still a grade school teacher. But speaking of that, that brings me to my second exciting announcement. Made a pretty big life decision, folks. Gonna spend a year doing this full time. Taking a one year sabbatical from teaching. Not quitting. Taking a year. Because I'm having a lot of fun creating content and I want to take a run at it. Give it a fair shake. So that's what I'm gonna do. And if you'd like to support that, it's very easy. The standard stuff's there, the Patreon and all that. Would be immensely appreciated, obviously. But if you wanted to offer me a birthday present, there's a very easy thing you could do. Just follow me on a different social media website. That would be a huge favor. Be it Twitter, Steve underscore Boots. Twitch, also Steve underscore Boots. Or YouTube, also Steve underscore Boots. Just give me a follow on one of those, maybe watch something I made over there. That'd be a huge gift to me. But you've already given me a pretty amazing gift, which is this platform. Because this all doesn't happen if you folks aren't paying attention. So thank you so much for watching, listening, for making sure that I have a happy birthday. So ask whatever you like below. Answers to come. This person is such a good question. How do I deal with the haters? It's super easy. I ask myself one critical question. Do I actually care what they think? Do I value the opinion of somebody who would come onto the internet and insult a stranger? No. Like, yeah, it does get a little depressing to see the petty cruelty that a bunch of people can bring to their comments, but they're by and large a noisy minority. I call it my duck feathers. Just water off a duck's back. Because getting mad is what they want. They want to rise out of me. And so if I get on here and I'm like, Bruh! I've given them exactly what they want. So instead, I either talk past them and use their comment as an opportunity to educate, or I make fun of them but in a way that makes it very clear that their opinion doesn't matter to me. Usually it's a silly filter. Really takes the wind out of their sails. Hard to argue with the dinosaur. This person's asking a very valid question. As I move towards taking a one-year sabbatical from teaching, doesn't me stepping away mean that I'm becoming a part of the teacher shortage? And yeah, that's something that I struggle with. But I've always viewed teaching as a bit of a multiplier. It's a way to have an impact on a large number of people. One person helps 25 plus. And that's how I've always sort of viewed the value proposition of teaching. It's a great value for your effort, for how much you can help people. But now that I have this platform, that value proposition has changed a little bit. I'm able to have a positive impact on a way larger number of people. See, my whole goal behind becoming a teacher was just to make the world a better place. To leave it better than I found it. I now have a different path for doing that. And hopefully, some of the things that I create and some of the content that I bring forward is going to be able to help other teachers to be better teachers in their own classrooms. So that's how I reconcile it. That yeah, there will be a negative consequence to me leaving the classroom, but there will be a far larger positive consequence to me making content. At least hopefully. This person's asking my opinion on the Avatar The Last Airbender cartoon. And I say this completely unequivocally. It is a masterpiece, one of the truly great pieces of fiction ever created, bar none. Masterful storytelling, pacing, character building, world building, all of it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm comparing it to, like, War and Peace. It's a masterpiece for what it is, a piece of animation. Korra, also excellent. I think pretty heavily underrated. It's got its flaws, but it's good. But I really love that sort of long-term character building. Like, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood was fantastic for that. Honestly, King of the Hill was amazing for that. Because story comes from character. And I think that's where the live-action adaptation has struggled a little bit. By cutting out a lot of the side adventures, you don't get to spend as much time with the characters and get to know them and care about them. It's become more plot-focused and less character-focused. But the reason why we love Avatar is because we love the characters. And a good adaptation would remember that. This person's asking a fantastic question. What advice would I give to new teachers working in Saskatchewan? And it's not just for Saskatchewan, it's for anywhere. If you are a new teacher, I have one word of advice for you. Boundaries. You need to maintain strict boundaries with your workplace. 
Draw lines in your life that work will not cross. Because teaching is very different from other jobs. Teaching will take over every part of your life. You can always be thinking about teaching. You can always be thinking about that kid who's struggling, or that incident that happened, or that project you're working on, or the lessons tomorrow, or whatever it may be. Teaching is a limitless task. There's always more to do. So if you don't define boundaries for yourself, it'll take everything. And that's a big part of why new teachers are so tired, because they don't have boundaries, so they're just always working. Now, the second piece of advice that comes with this is systems. You need to develop systems that make your work more efficient. Work smarter, not harder. Not every individual piece of work needs to be marked. Not every individual piece of work needs to be marked by you. Stuff like that, for example. But even things as simple as systematizing your marking, your planning, stuff like that, can make your life a lot easier. But yeah, boundaries and systems. That advice works for anyone. This person's exactly right. TikTok does not pay content creators in Canada, and it does not appear that they have any intention of doing so. They'll gladly run ads next to our content. They're good with that. But do I get a cut? No, sir. So if you would like to support me, there is a very easy way to do so. Just go watch my stuff on YouTube. All of my TikToks that I post daily are posted there in a full compilation. It's usually about 15 minutes long. You can just watch them all in one go. And I do them in order. It's news, and it's commentary, and it's silly stuff. So you can watch as far as you like. I also post a 35-minute news and comedy show every Monday. It's called What the Hell, Canada? And honestly, I'm super proud of it. It would mean a lot to me if you went and checked it out. Since it's my birthday and all, you know. This person's asking a really good question. What would I do to get more young people interested in left-wing politics? So there's a couple of things. Number one is the heart of left-wing politics is always community. So community building is a big part of it. Building in-person communities where young people can build connections to one another. Now, there's an education element to this, but you got to be careful with that. Because it's got to happen outside of school. Because we don't want schools to be directing kids into any given ideology. At least not more than they already are. So that's going to happen through things like public education and stuff like TikTok. That's done a lot to get young people interested in left-wing politics. But I think more than anything, we need a national left-wing movement that doesn't suck. Because there are a lot of leftists out there who are terrific, and there are a lot of leftists out there who are miserable, and who are just like an endless barrage of purity tests. So we need to build a broad, inclusive, welcoming, friendly left-wing movement nationally. Because until something like that exists, what is there to join? This person's asking a great question. Do I feel any responsibility for monitoring my comment section? A little but I don't monitor it. And it's because it's simply not realistic. Like, I get tens of thousands of comments in a day. I just can't read them. So I've got some key terms filtered, and when I open my phone, if I see something particularly egregious, I'll block the person, because I don't delete comments. I don't believe in shutting that conversation down. But if somebody's way out of bounds, they get the old block a with no hesitation. But I think what it comes down to is it's not realistic to expect creators on any sort of scale to moderate their own comment sections, especially when you can't even add moderators. So this is more of a TikTok issue. Like, if there's problematic stuff in the comment sections, I think part of it is a community responsibility to be reporting that. All of us. Because it's very stressful for creators to see problematic stuff in their comment section and to feel like they constantly need to be policing it. Because it's definitely a struggle. person's asking a great question. If I wasn't teaching, what career would I have chosen? I actually applied for two university programs at the same time when I finished my first degree. I finished up an English degree and I applied to education and journalism. I got accepted into both. And I chose education. And then I found my way into something akin to the other. I don't consider what I do on here journalism. It's more commentary and analysis. But it all sort of just falls into one another. And as for buying me a beverage, of course. I'm hoping to travel a little bit more this year as I take a sabbatical. Hopefully doing some live events in some places. And as I do, I will keep folks posted. I want to show you a prized possession. Coming over here to the new battle station and... Mike!
Cabbages! This person's asking a terrific question. What is my favorite filter? And while I've used many, there's one that makes me laugh every single time. Because it is unhinged. It is... Mordecai. Right, buddy? The head wiggle kills me. Come on, that's incredible. Oh, this handsome fellow, this is the Baron. Although sometimes he's also Officer Fluffy. He is quite fluffy. And we do like to relax together. We find that quite peaceful. Sometimes we just ride in style. No, he's getting fussy. His name is Boo Boo. He's very sweet, and he'll be in as many videos as he agrees to.